Naughty little mouse, Percy. Once upon a time, there were four little mice, and their names were Flory, Molly, Fluffy, and Percy. They lived with their mother in a cozy burrow beneath the roots of a very big oak tree. Now, my dears, said old Mrs. Mouse one morning, you may go into the fields or down the lane, but do not go into Mr. Johnson's garden. Your father had an accident there. He was caught and put in a pie by Mrs. Johnson. Now, run along and do not get into mischief. I am going out. Then, old Mrs. Mouse took a basket and her little umbrella and went through the woods to the bakery. She bought a loaf of brown bread and five currant cakes. Flory, Molly, and Fluffy, who were good little mice, went down the lane to gather blackberries. But Percy, who was very naughty, ran straight away to Mr. Johnson's garden and squeezed under the gate. First, he ate some lettuces and some French beans, and then he ate some radishes, and then, feeling rather sick, he went to look for some parsley. But around the end of a cucumber frame, whom should he meet but Mr. Johnson? Mr. Johnson was on his hands and knees, planting out young cabbages, but he jumped up and ran after Percy, waving a rake and shouting, Stop, thief! Percy was most dreadfully frightened. He ran all over the garden, for he had forgotten the way back to the gate. He lost one of his tiny shoes among the cabbages and the other shoe amongst the potatoes. After losing his shoes, he ran on four legs and went faster, so that he might have gotten away altogether if he had not, unfortunately, run into a gooseberry net and got caught by the large buttons on his jacket. It was a blue jacket with brass buttons, quite new. Percy gave himself up for lost and shed big tears, but his sobs were overheard by some friendly sparrows who flew to him in great excitement and implored him to exert himself. Mr. Johnson came up with a sieve, which he intended to pop upon the top of Percy, but Percy wriggled out just in time, leaving his jacket behind him. He rushed into the tool shed and jumped into a watering can. It would have been a beautiful thing to hide in if it had not had so much water in it. Mr. Johnson was quite sure that Percy was somewhere in the tool shed, perhaps hidden underneath a flower pot. He began to turn them over carefully, looking under each one. Presently, Percy sneezed. Curdy school. Mr. Johnson was after him in no time. Mr. Johnson tried to put his foot upon Percy, who jumped out of a window, upsetting three plants. The window was too small for Mr. Johnson, and he was tired of running after Percy. He went back to his work. Percy sat down to rest. He was out of breath and trembling with fright, and he had not the least idea which way to go. Also, he was very damp with sitting in that can. After a time, he began to wander about, going lippity-lippity, not very fast and looking all around. He found a door in a wall, but it was locked, and there was no room for a little mouse to squeeze underneath. Percy had to wait to catch his breath. Then, as Mr. Johnson was no longer in sight, he ran back towards the tool shed. Suddenly, quite close to him, he heard the noise of a hoe. Scritch, scratch, scratch, scritch. Percy scuttered underneath the bushes. But presently, as nothing happened, he came out and climbed upon a wheelbarrow and peeped over. 
The first thing he saw was Mr. Johnson hoeing onions. His back was turned towards Percy, and beyond him was the gate. Percy got down very quietly off the wheelbarrow and started running as fast as he could along a straight walk behind some black currant bushes. Mr. Johnson caught sight of him at the corner, but Percy did not care. He slipped underneath the gate and was safe at last in the woods outside the garden. Mr. Johnson hung up the little blue jacket and the shoes for a scarecrow to frighten the blackbirds. Percy never stopped running or looked behind him till he got home to the big oak tree. He was so tired that he flopped down upon the nice soft sand on the floor of the burrow and shut his eyes. His mother was busy cooking. She wondered what he had done with his clothes. It was the second little jacket and pair of shoes that Percy had lost in a fortnight. Percy was not very well during the evening. His mother put him to bed and made some chamomile tea, and she gave a dose of it to Percy. But Flory, Molly, and Fluffy had bread and milk and blackberries for supper. The next morning, Percy felt much better, but he stayed in bed until the afternoon to rest and recover his strength. While his siblings went out to play, Percy lay quietly, listening to the sounds of the woods outside. He heard birds chirping, leaves rustling, and occasionally the distant sound of Mr. Johnson's hoe. That was a close call, Percy thought to himself. He knew he had been very lucky to escape Mr. Johnson's garden. From that day on, Percy decided to heed his mother's warnings and be more careful. A week later, as the little mice played in the field, they noticed something strange. The scarecrow with Percy's jacket and shoes was gone. Flory, Molly, and Fluffy were curious, but Percy was relieved. Perhaps Mr. Johnson had decided to use the scarecrow elsewhere. Life went back to normal for the mouse family. They continued to gather food, play, and explore. But Percy always remembered the day he narrowly escaped from Mr. Johnson's garden. He learned to appreciate the safety of their home and the wisdom of his mother's advice. As the seasons changed and the days grew shorter, the little mice spent more time indoors, listening to their mother's stories and learning about the world beyond their oak tree home. They learned the importance of family, safety, and the consequences of disobedience. Join us for the full bedtime stories from our enchanted playlist on our YouTube channel.